Good evening, everybody. My name is Anita Lee. I'm the Chief of Programming for TIFF. I'm very, very excited this evening to present the world premiere of Devotion by J.D. Dillard. I would like to first thank our lead and major sponsors, Bell, RBC, Bulgari, and Visa for their continued support. Thank you to our major supporters, the Government of Canada, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is also eligible for the People's Choice Award. Vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. We would all also like to say a big thank you to Sony Pictures Releasing Canada and Sony Pictures Entertainment and STX Films for providing us with this film. Devotion is an inspiring tale of friendship, courage, and sacrifice. This visceral war film, screened exclusively in IMAX at the festival, tells the story of the U.S. Navy's first black aviator. Set during the early days of the Korean War, Devotion stars Jonathan Majors, Da Flat Five Bloods, and Glenn Powell, Top Gun, Maverick, as pilots who confront both geopolitical uncertainty and racist hostility with uncommon value. To say a couple of remarks, I would like to invite J.D. Diller, the director. Oh, what's up, Tarana? What's going on? Um, so first, uh, so many things I want to say, but uh, it's a film festival, so we need to watch the movie. Um, it's an incredible honor to be here. Uh, and I just want to first thank Anita, Cameron, the programmers, um, the volunteers, the city. Uh, you know, when you start to make a movie, you hope this is a place you can show it. So it's really crazy, like absurd to be here. Um, so uh, how do we want to do this? Um, if you're in the audience and had anything to do with this movie, just very quickly, could you stand up? So, to my friends who are sitting down, um, this is how you make a movie. Uh, these folks here. Um, for years, this team has been working to bring this story to life, and at the height of the pandemic, they left their families. Um, uh, and they came to Savannah, Georgia to help bring a story that needed to be told out into life. So uh, to them, I'm forever indebted. Um, we're here tonight because of Jesse Brown, the Navy's first black naval aviator, and his wingman, Tom Hudner. Um, and possibly, Jesse earned his wings in 1948, uh, and the isolationism of that uh, uh, is a story I'd heard before. Uh, it's one that I heard at home. Um, because 40 years after Jesse earned his wings uh, in the US Navy, my dad earned his. Um, <laughs> thanks, friends. Uh, you know, they were both boys who were uh, taken to air shows at a very young age. Um, and witnessing the magic of flight, they had the impossible dream of being in the cockpit themselves. Um, so tonight is not just telling the story of those men, but, uh, one very, very near and dear to my heart. Um, before we get started, it'd be my absolute pleasure to introduce you to our cast. Um, we're going to start with Boone Platt. <laughs> Boone Platt. Okay. Uh, Boone Platt, Boone Platt, Boone. Okay. Serenda Swan. Okay. Uh, Joseph Cross, Nick Hargrove, Spencer Neville. Oh, geez, hello, surprise, geez. Uh, Joe Jonas, Darren Kagasoff, Spencer Neville, Christina Jackson, Mr. Glenn Powell, and finally, 
Jonathan Majors. Wait. Oh, there you are. <laughs> called your name, Nick. We called your name. Um, so look, there's so much that I love to say and so many people that we want to thank. But again, we need to get this going. Um, to Sony, thank you for your thoughtful care and support in this process. Uh, Black Label, thank you for uh, letting us tell a story like this at this scale the way that we should tell it. Um, to the Browns and Hudners, uh, this is your story. And we all up here are grateful for your trust. To my cast and crew, I will spend the next few months, I promise, effusively singing your praises and celebrating you. To my family and Gracie, I love you, I love you, I love you. Uh, to Gun Powell, um, this movie, uh, this is a movie because of your passion, um, and it's a good one because of your heart. Uh, and to Jonathan, you are a vision, you are a truth, and you are my brother. And to our audience, um, thank you for coming to the movies. And before we roll, I uh, just want to let my brother here say something. Oh. Uh, that's the soul speaking. Uh, what, 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 first, I just want to honor this man. Uh, J.D. Dillard, for uh, orchestrating this. And for taking care of all of us individuals as we went into this world. Um, as you've done, I just want to, again, honor the families, uh, the Browns, the Hudners, and extended family, um, our cast and crew who got to make it here. We really appreciate that. And, uh, hey, we're here now. Amen. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are about to take in this, uh, this story, that um, the about 12, 13, 14, 1500 of us uh, spent so much time uh, putting our hearts into, putting our minds into, putting our time into conjuring up uh, spirits, having conversations with uh, ourselves and with our country and with our uh, fellow uh, kinsmen um, about in order to bring something that is uh, completely truthful, uh, completely original, uh, and from the heart devotion uh, to me and particularly the role of Jesse Brown represents um, a huge turning point uh, for me and my and my uh, individual um, uh, journey. I've not once been surrounded by uh, a team, uh, Black Label What's Up, um, uh, that supported so um, fully. I've never looked at a family, uh, What's Up Browns, um, that made me feel so implicated as an artist mm. to go, okay, now, now, now you didn't talk all this shit about being an actor. Now it's go time now. This is it. This is what it looks like. Um, I've never once been across from an individual who I knew was going to fly in the air with me when the time came uh, and hold me down on the ground um, and be able to come home to a sanctuary and have scenes uh, with a beautiful actress as Christina Jackson and to tell this story. And all of that was orchestrated and held together uh, by our brother J.D. Dillard. Um, and then you got the 32s. Uh, my brothers, my brothers, my brothers, my brothers, my brothers. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm honored to present this to you guys. I see you in, what's up? Um, uh, I, I'm very happy to, to be a part of this and send it off in this way. Um, we love this story. We love these individuals, the Hudners, the Browns. We thank you for this. Um, this is our small contribution to something that these men, um, the 32s and in particular Tom Hudner and Jesse Brown, um, gave their lives and, and, and lent their legacy to. Uh, and here's just our contribution to bring it to now, um, to show that you can do anything, that you can move forward, irregardless of the circumstances you've been put into. Um, that's possible. And how is it possible? Through devotion um, to yourself, to your craft, to your work, to your heart, to what you believe in. Um, and keeping your eyes on the sky. Um, we love y'all already. Uh, we hope you guys love the film. Uh, please enjoy it. Uh, I got fingers crossed that I can stick around for this Q&A uh, because duties are pulling me across the ocean. Uh, so we're gonna wrap it up and uh, we're gonna give it to you. Um, as Glenn Powell says, as uh, Jesse Brown says, as Tom Hutton says, up and hard on my call. 
Ready, set, hit it. Uh, so ready, set, hit it. Uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Oh, my God. I came here as an eight-year-old to see North of Superior, and to be standing on this side of the screen is such a rush, especially for this movie. Uh, I'm Norm Wilner. I'm a programmer in digital releasing and industry selects for TIFF, and I've also seen Devotion, so they got me to do the Q&A um, because things ran a little long at the beginning, and we were going to have to keep it a bit short, but without any further ado, J.D. Dillion. Hey, friends. We'll just share it. Yeah, okay, we're going to kind of share it each other. I'm going to stop you real quick um, because there can't be clapping at all. Uh, there can be a little clapping. Until the Hudner and Brown families can join us and stand up. Um, so if I could have Jessica Knight Henry, Shannon Henry, Jamal Knight, John Franklin, Melissa Franklin, Hannah Franklin, Heaven Franklin, Tom Hudner III, Jennifer Hudner, Lily Hudner, and Madison Smith, please. Uh, this is their movie, y'all. So, um, uh, so let's chat. I'll break. I'll make it. You know, we'll open the mood up a little bit. Um, Jonathan is still in character, so he's on a flight right now. Um, <laughs> um, so I'd love for us all to chat a little bit, very briefly, with uh, Christina Jackson <laughs> and Glenn Powell. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to the stage. And um, I kind of, it's such a strange thing. The film is, is, it's exhilarating and respectful and remorseful, not remorseful, but regretful. And, and it's about all the, the things that we wish we were beyond and aren't, right? I mean, it, it was set in the 50s, but it's so clearly a film of the moment. And not just because you've got, you know, state-of-the-art storytelling techniques that weren't available in the 50s, but it is still just so rooted in that, like that first scene with, with, with Major, in, in the, like, with you overhearing him in the, like, it's just, I saw that in a tiny little screen and it was too intimate, like it was actually painful to listen to, and I can't imagine what it was like to hear it here, but it's also so necessary, like we need to see where that comes from, where, he, where it is in him and, and how he, he turns himself off to be who he is, and I guess the first question is, how do you get that? How do you tell an actor to go there, and how do you capture it? So, uh, you know, that is something we learned about Jesse, something that he did as a boy, um, that just seemed like such a clear window into inner world, which, you know, something that we feel a lot of stories that traditionally maybe our first black ex can sometimes lack a little bit of that inner world, so we wanted to make sure that there was yeah, a very clear window to that. Um, so that's really where it started to understand like what his what the cost of this was. You know, the movie very intentionally does not start in flight school, where we sort of watch the trial and tribulation of that. But you know, the the arc of this movie is really that of a relationship. So we wanted to appear, you know, we wanted to start this moment, start at this moment in time, but still honor what the path there had been. Um, and then more on just like the anecdotal side. I mean, that was like the second day of shooting and Jonathan walks in and does that. We're like, okay, um, cool. So yeah, only, a, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, so, uh, I mean, yeah, Jonathan's just, uh, you know, I mean, all of our cast uh, uh, just really, really. Oh yeah, let him hear it. And, and yeah, casting, it doesn't happen by accident, right? You, you chose everybody for what they could give you, for what they can do. So how long was it before you had this cast? How long did it take to put it together? Truly not that long, but one of the most important pieces of the cast came with the project and Glenn. 
Um, I, I forced you to cast me. Yeah, um, sorry about that. He's like, I'm the producer, and I just there's one stipulation. I no, but I mean, it's it, like what dumb cosmic luck that I could step into this thing, uh, being you know the second involved on this stage, um, and what Glenn is able to do, his commitment to the story, his love of the Hudner family already, all the, the experience he had with Tom before he passed. Um, it's it's uh, like, I yeah, I'm lucky. Oh yeah, well, real quick, um, not to be uh, annoying, but I have to sort of embarrass my dad real quick. Um, we haven't, I don't think, dad, have you seen, you haven't seen this. Um, so, just in terms of where my love for um, aviation comes from, um, uh, I figured we should just put like a little little tag on the movie. It's not like a Marvel thing or anything. It's not like a big deleted scene. There are no um, extra scenes. I'm talking it up a lot. I probably should have kept talking about other stuff before I pivoted us to this. Um, you can't but, uh, run time. Here it is. It's quite literally the reason to um, start this journey. I'm sorry, I didn't want to derail that, no. but that anyway, was important. You got him. Now you that that's him. over. You got him. You got him. Oh, we did get him. Guys, this doesn't happen very often. <laughs> I tell you, the uh, Dillards uh, are an emotional family. I watched uh, you, your dad give you his flight jacket on day one of filming. And to watch your director break down in tears right before you start filming is, it's special. It's different. <laughs> yeah. Confidence building. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, wow. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'm, I mispronounced your name. I said Dillard because I saw, the first time I saw Sweetheart, the press release had a typo that I caught. That is very funny. Stuck in <laughs> Honestly, head. I'd prefer Dillard. Uh, you know, then it's I could like, be an auteur. That'd yeah. be great. Well, this, this French guy really gets Kiersey Clemens. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't seen Sweetheart, see Sweetheart. Um, yeah, well, but then that goes right back to acting and casting and working with people. And the two of you have so much to shoulder because when Jesse's not in the frame, you're thinking about like you're you're he changed your characters' lives and you carry that even before he's gone. Um, how closely? I mean, obviously you, you've worked very closely with the family, but how how much research is necessary to get that right? How do you do it and factor it into like sort of period attitude and all the other things that are going on and still be like true to the emotion? Okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I used to be a critic. It's no, a load. No, 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 it's okay. Um, Jesse was gone. By the time this comes around, Daisy is now gone. There were interviews of her, speaking of Jessie in their time, but she was much older at this point. And so, although it's helpful to get speech and cadence, there is other things that I need. Um, in talking to Jessica, um, she told me some stories that uh, Daisy has shared with her. But also Jessica told me that clearly the love between these two is just out of this world. But um, Daisy kept a lot of Jesse and her memories and her love for him very close to her heart after he died. And understandably, because it was something that hurt her so immensely. And so while they did have stories, um, there's a lot that she took with her. And when you look at that house in Rhode Island, nobody really knows what they were doing in there. They don't know what the day-to-day -day was like. They don't know what he said to Pam. And so there's a lot to have to create. But Jesse's last letter to her, the one that Jonathan is reading at the end, is the thing that I read and it was like, oh, oh, he loved her. <laughs> then my conversation with Jonathan was, I have to figure out what that love looks like on her, on this 1950s, 22, black woman from Mississippi whose husband is doing the impossible. And they don't have anybody to go talk to. They talk to each other. She doesn't have other black naval aviator wives to talk to. She is the first one. And so there was a lot of discussion that we had to have, but also you show up on the day and 
literally the spirit is there, you know? And as hard as it was, I was a mess every day because while we were filming, I had begun to mourn them and mourn this loss and the fact that this man should still be here. And not only should he still be here, but we should know his name way more than we did. And so, um, you know, I seem to be the period peace queen. And um, it is it is nothing for me to, to look up the makeup and the hair and all of that. But when you are honoring someone who is not here anymore, um, that is very hard. And so I did a lot of talking to Daisy. I did a lot of reading. I, I read over Jesse's letter over and over and over and over. I read the book and sat down let the camera go and just let whatever came be there and then leave it there because it, it was not mine to have anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, I got to say your performance in this movie is just unbelievable. It really is. I mean... Is, is this your first, first movie? All right, technically... Yes, but no. Technically, first movie. My first movie. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's it's um. I mean, that relationship is is the heartbeat of this whole piece. Yes. Without it, it, it doesn't survive. And and the fact that, um, I think the relationship between the Hudners and the Browns exists in that last mm -hmm. scene, and was really the heartbeat of the entire movie. Um, I went into this movie never. I've never been so nervous to make anything in my whole life yes. because. We had um, to look these two families in the eyes and say, hey, this is, this is the legacy. This is what we did for you. I hope you're proud of it. And um, I hope you are proud of it. Yeah. Um, because, because it really is um, one of those things that every single person on this movie, I've never seen um, a group of people guided by such um, duty. Uh, before ever, everybody cracked their heart open in order to tell the story for the Browns and the Hudders, and um, it was just an honor. And really, <laughs> the, um, the honor is ours as well to have you here, to have you all here. Um, did you tell them about the DMR thing? Okay, uh, the, the the very nice people from IMAX just told me that this is the first time this DMR has been. Presented. So you're the first people to see this movie like this. Yes. Yes. Very exciting. Just to make it a little extra special. No, that's very, yeah. And thank you to our friends at IMAX. And thank you all for coming because we really do have to cut it short. Um, that was okay, right? Like that, we covered it. I mean, it's, that's I mean, the movie, basically. I, I don't want to dismiss it. This is, a, this is kind of an important thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to do right by you guys. You did right by everyone else. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being here, y'all. Thank, thank you. you all. Good night, everybody.